If you go up to the loft today, you're sure of a big surprise. If you go up to the loft today, you'll never believe your eyes. For every train there ever was has gathered there together because today's the day that Jenny does the Monday Club. Yay! <laughs> it's like being on Steve right in the afternoon with the posse this, isn't it? <laughs> Happy birthday to you, squash tomatoes and stew. You smell like a monkey, and you act like one too. <laughs> 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 Hello there everybody, welcome to the Monday Club. It's a big exciting night is it not? I hope you caught the special announcement earlier on and uh, I've been, well the cupboard monkey did nearly let that slip a few weeks ago. I don't mean to, I just I know things. that she didn't but um, it kind of gave a little bit of a clue so some people did guess correctly that it well, was going to be a I'm a sorry that I ruined the fact that you've got a limited edition uh, action figure based on you in your phenomenal award-winning role as The Shelf in episodes <laughs> of Crime Watch. The Shelf? <laughs> I thought that was your breakout role. <laughs> but um, it, it's really great to see you. I hope to find you all well. There's so many people in. And right, um, I need to uh, also thank a few people from last week as well because I forgot to check the PayPal.me account. So a big, big thank you to... Mark Wilson, who sent £10, uh, really, really generous of you, thank you very much for that. Robert Steers as well sent $10, uh, and Adrian Bartlett, who uh, sent £19.12. Uh, so thank you ever so much. You're all so very generous, thank you so absolutely, much. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, we'll you try You also and... have another group to say thank you to, don't you? Uh, I'm pointing at them on the screen. Yes, that's right. And of course, a big, big thank you to Scale Model Scenery for sponsoring the Monday Club live stream. And we couldn't do this without the support of all you guys and also those at Scale Model Scenery. And you may have seen on the Facebook page that um, uh, they have got some new kits out. And I'm particularly impressed by the pre-coloured roofing slates, which actually look amazing. Honestly, they do. And the platform access stairs, which are an etched kit. So uh, basically what you see in the picture is what it builds up to. Um, it's a really great kit. So obviously uh, we're gonna be putting a link and we've got a link in the description box. And uh, yeah, that's it. So I'm just gonna bring them up on screen. It's a really great way of uh, improving the realism of your model railway, the easy way. So amazing roofing does not have to be hard and inaccessible to the masses because you too can make great roofing. So thank you ever so much to Scale Model Scenery for that. And uh, uh, for some reason, YouTube has decided that it's going to go, oh no, that you remember that, that stream you were watching? Yeah, you didn't need to see that. Yeah, you didn't need to see that. We'll just show you something else instead. And it's like, no. Ah, it, it showed you the, uh, the international uh, buttock scratching contest, has it? <laughs> something like that. You were watching that earlier on. I know you're a big right. fan. Right. So, um, first up, uh, if, if the um, <laughs> the Zoe can just change so I can actually see what's going on on the screen. What, you want to actually be able to see things? This is not part it of It would the... be This quite is nice. not part yes, of my it's... contract. <laughs> you don't have a contract. I... You can be out the That's door. That's why this is not part of it. Uh, just be careful. We don't <laughs> want you... Billy's replacement speakers sponsoring your side of the conversation because you are sitting a bit close you, to the microphone. Let's just I mean... say you, yes. <laughs> right. But yeah, anyway, so... Um, it's been it's been difficult actually to keep that secret uh, that we basically uh, commissioned a MDV wagon from Acura Scale. All of the order fulfilment is being handled by Rails of Sheffield, so you can order with confidence. I have been told by Rails of Sheffield um, that certainly in the in the first hour of release, uh, I got a message to tell me how many had been bought. So they are selling incredibly fast. I, I'm actually quite impressed how fast they're selling. So thank you 
ever so much for um, supporting the channel for getting these great models. Now they are due for delivery in Q3 along with all of the other uh, Acura Scale MDO and MDV wagons. What are you looking for? I'm trying to find Rails of Sheffield's page about it. Just Rails of Sheffield and um, yeah, yeah, you'll you'll get there. I'll eventually. find it. Yeah, you just you'll have you might have to look under a cura scale do some jiggery pokery to make them order themselves from cheap to so yeah mm -mm. so what's the cupboard monkey is massively distracting me well, uh, why don't you just look at the camera and talk to people because yeah, you're you're making a hash of it no no you need truck and wagon I can't get the staff can you so um a big big hello to oh barry turner i just see a tardis on a flat wagon oh yeah spotted that the minute we went live i told you didn't i i won i won my bet well i would have if if so we had uh 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 if you ordered them from expensive to she, she, what the hell have you done i've got an idea i'm gonna go to facebook yeah you do that right so whilst the cupboard monkey is making a complete hash of finding the listing but anyway yes yeah, so i've been told that they are selling really really quickly and they're a limited edition um and um so basically it's a case of miss it miss out i'm really really happy to be able to bring those to market really really glad that uh cure scale being so so helpful letting us uh, order those up and um right so uh, I forgot what I was going to say now because it's very distracting when you're just playing about messing about. Why don't you just talk while I'm doing this? Ooh, you think? You think? <laughs> I don't, so right, who I don't do in? this on purpose? Big hello to Susie Scott, Ian Turvey, Ham Shackleton, Cameron Patterson, Wamgok, Ed Ryder, Patrick Ling, Stevie Film, Josh's Railway Adventures, Mike Finch, Ruben Ashwell, Ben Tullet, Robert Fossey, Ryan G, Bang Got Your Junction, Carl Braun. Charlie Grinnell, John Nelson, Juliet Jones, Richard Brighton as well, B Mozza, um, who asks, how's the sales of your wagon? Incredibly strong, actually, stronger than I could have ever imagined. And um, uh, I, I'm actually blown away how popular these have been. Of course, it is um, a, a, a unique livery running number, but a prototypically correct livery underneath the graffiti spray tag um, of the uh, MDV. Uh, is it just hiding it from you? Not just that. The link I went to on Facebook for the live stream that had the link in brought up this live stream. What? Yeah. Which live stream? The one we're on now. Okay. So Facebook is messing me about and it smells and it's horrible and I don't okay. like it. Well, right. Um, Why don't you just keep going? I will find yeah. Look. Guys, I apologise. <laughs> Everything is uh, working in yeah, we, it, so well, and we're yeah, so Daniels, professional. Yeah, we are. Garthian, uh, Pendulet, Southern Train Girl, Daniel's OO Model Railways, the Irish Train Guy, who says, I love this channel. It's amazing, Jenny. Oh, thank you. Ever I know, so we're so professional. Flattery will get you quite a distance, I have to say. Liam at New Mills Model Railway, George Botterini, big, big thank you to you. And uh, George, very, very generously, actually <laughs> donated during the... Um, um, the um, uh, the the announcement video earlier. I didn't even know oh you could do that. Yes, I was so happy. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. So um, on so the generous. screen, um, I'll just show you. So this is what you're looking for on Rails of Sheffield, the Jenny Monday Club exclusive BR Bauxite MDV coal wagon, and it has the running number B three one two nine six three. Now I don't have uh, an actual uh, physical model here at the moment. We're waiting for is a livery. Is that because they haven't been built yet? It basically hasn't been made yet. And the reason for this, I know you may have seen the livery samples for um, the, uh, I forget, the, there's there's two other special commissions. Uh, Rails of Sheffield do have their own, and uh, I think it's Planet Industrials as well, has some really colourful orange and black ones, oh, uh, which look, look really, really nice. And then we're the third limited edition. So Acura Scale has put out a post today as well, um, which is how I then found out about the Planet Industrials one. Um, but yeah, uh, so we did that earlier on. Big, big thanks to George Botterini. Other news. Right. Let's cruise through some of the other news. Uh, Rapido Trains. Let me just find a view and then uh, hopefully uh, if you bring up the... Give me one second. Uh, <clears throat> oh, have you put, going to put the link in? Yes. Um, Rapido Trains, the Lion, gosh, 
Uh, you, you wait ages, and then there's two lions come at once. So Hornby very, very quickly announced their lion, and we'd all predicted that this was going to be in the 2021 announcement. We were like, you know, we all love to do a bit of guessing, and then it wasn't, and we were like, oh. And then a few days ago, um, well, last week, um, beginning of last week, I think it was, uh, Hornby announced they were doing a lion, and it was like, wow, that came out of nowhere. And then Rapido Trains, a couple of days later, announced that they were doing a Tipfield Thunderbolt package. They'd got the worldwide license. So bear in mind that these models are going to be sold all around the world. Rapido Trains actually does have the distribution. Um, you guys in the US who are watching this and in Canada as well, this should be a product that you'll be able to get over there. I don't know how familiar you guys are with Ealing comedy films, but certainly Tipfield Thunderbolt... Um, quite a famous film in the UK. I don't know how well it's travelled abroad. Oh my word, gosh. Uh, Simon Train's Model Railway Showcase says, Happy Birthday, Jenny. Also, thank you for the Monday Club each week. And it's very, very generously donated £10. Thank you ever so much. That is amazingly generous of you. Ben Tullett says, Hi, Jenny. What's what that terrible sound? Who is that? What? The final comment. Oh, I did just block them. Yeah, um, that's going. That mm. That's not acceptable. Yeah, so um, uh, what amazed me, actually, is... Actually, no, I wasn't amazed at all, but uh, within minutes of the announcement being made, not to be able to watch it, but just the thing saying there's an announcement coming, um, a troll in their sock puppet accounts just disliked bombed it, and then had their accounts deleted by YouTube, not because of me, but just because they were a scammer. But um, they seem to have found the channel. But unfortunately... All you guys who do YouTube will find the bigger you get, the more jealousy it provokes in a certain sector of the population. So just remember, you're living rent-free in their heads. It's brilliant. Um, right, uh, Ben Tuller asks, Hi Jenny, what's that terrible sound? That sound is to do with the... Um, for some reason, um, we've got a couple of trains shuffling. Um, you'll see, actually, you, possibly just behind me, you'll have seen the Class 25 come around. We're using the Zen Black ABC shuttle, and for some reason, when they go into the shuttle sections where they slow down and stop, they buzz a little bit. And it's because of the way that the ABC shuttle works, it ever so slightly changes the waveform on one rail, as I'm led to believe. So you might... Oh, it's not doing it now, because it's being talked about. It's decided not to do it. But sometimes you can detect a little bit of a buzzing noise, it's perfectly normal, but of course, we've got very, very uh, good microphones, very, very good at picking up noises like this. So if you see, if you hear a momentary weird buzzing noise, um, it's simply, I mean, you may see it. If I go to... It's, um, it's not because Jenny's brain is winding up. No, so if I go to... Oh, no, you, you just, it's just gone off the stream there. So if I go to this angle, you'll see the train coming here, and it gets to about here, and then it stops... But it'll... there. Now, now that you've pointed it out, I can hear it as well. It just makes a weird buzzing noise. Um, it's not quite as bad as it was. Uh, Gronkston Model Railway, hi to you. George Botterini, uh, Cheshire Lines, even Terry, Clive Cobalt, Blackpool Steve, Stan Marshall, Jerry BVR, uh, Robert Becking, even Terry. Um, gosh, we've got, there's a lot of people in. Don't forget to tickle that like button. Also share the stream too. And if you haven't already done so, do consider subscribing. But anyway, yes, right. So, um, Rapido Trains then announced a full range of stuff. So this is more than just the Lion. Um, the full announcement is being made on the 1st of April. So <laughs> everybody actually thought that this was a very, very... Uh, convoluted April Fool's uh, announcement, but uh, Rapido Trains have assured me that this is actually... It's just um, unfortunate timing? No, I think originally they were planning on, on making the announcement on the 1st of April as a kind of a very, very um, convoluted way of making people think it was an April Fool's joke, but then it wasn't going to be. But because Hornby had announced out of the blue, they had to announce it. It's all very messy, but really looking forward to that. The 042 Lion is certainly uh, a locomotive that I'm really looking forward to. I thought that we were going to see that from Hornby, uh, not, uh, yeah, from Hornby in this year's announcements. And um, then it wasn't, and then it was. So now we've got two Lions announced. Whether they'll both go the distance, I really don't know. 
Um, I am pretty much um, of the opinion that the Rapido Trains one, if they've got the worldwide license, that is definitely, definitely happening. So, uh, um, I did it. It just, just seems a bit weird to put out a, an announcement on the 1st of April. I mean, Google did it very successfully one year when they announced Gmail on the 1st of April, but it, it seems like a big risk to... To make a major announcement on that day. See, uh, Rapido trains have a great sense of humour. So it's the kind of thing that they would do. Right. Um, just to, you know, just to lighten the mood. But I think their hand's been forced because Hornby also made this <laughs> announcement. Yeah. So they suddenly thought, oh, um, we probably ought to, um, you know, drop a few hints here. So I think that's what's happened. Oh, my word. Um, <clears throat> John Nelson has incredibly generously oh, donated... You. 10 US dollars. Thank you ever so much for that. That is amazingly generous. And of course, it does help us to uh, keep making the videos that you want to see. And I'd also like to um, put out a big, big thank you to Robert Steers of American Limited Models. I know some of the US viewers will be familiar with this brand. It's not actually a brand that's currently um, available in the UK. I know that there, um, there, there's, there's some discussions going on, hopefully. They'll find a UK um, supplier for the models, but um, I, I, they very, very kindly sent over a load of wagons. The boxes, um, the boxes are here because the the wagons themselves are downstairs waiting to be photographed. Because I filmed the video. Do you want me to go and get one and show it? So um, if you're okay climbing up and down the stairs. Well, I'm not too well. Uh, well, thank you to I Retro can... Mickey eighty two for asking. I'm not entirely well. I'll go and get one for you. Okay, so this is American Limited Models, and they are amazing tank cars. So there will be a an all-new um, uh, uh, product review video coming um, next couple of weeks. I'm not sure when into the, um, the video release cycle it is. We've got loads of great videos. I've actually been filming so many videos because I need to build up a buffer because of the announcement that I need to make. Right, so everybody sit tight. Actually, I'll wait for the cupboard monkey to get back. Ooh, it's exciting, isn't it? But today has been amazing. It's also um, my birthday, um, my wedding anniversary. Now, those two always fall on the same date. The reason for that is because I'm useless at remembering dates. So I figured I kind of... Um, no, the tanker. What's this then? That's a GT3. Something else I've been reviewing is the GT3. So the cupboard monkey has um, completely missed. This. See, there's a the point. I don't know what these things are. There's a point, and the cupboard monkey's somewhere over there, completely missing it. Um, so she's brought me up the GT3. I have just filmed a review of the GT3. I, I need to put some pictures out. On the Facebook page, for that a big, big thank you to KR Models who've lent me the GT3 for the review. Um, so that's going to be coming. Oh gosh, it's all go, isn't it? Uh, but when the cupboard monkey five, she'll come up that next with a Hellion Class 16. I bet she will. Oh, hang on, I'll go and get the other thing. No, 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 tanker, tanker. What do you call me? You know what a tanker is, don't you? I said, what did you call me? <laughs> a Wally. So um, I've got here one of the American Limited <laughs> models of the tanker cars, uh, the ATSF, the uh, Santa Fe. Uh, this one is the reclaimed diesel fuel tanker. And these are actually incredibly long-lived wagons, introduced in, I think it's about 1949, and ran right through until the early 1990s, which is a very impressive innings for a bogey tank car. In fact, looking at it, it reminds me a lot of the tank car that they did the implosion myth on Mythbusters with. And given when that was filmed, the chances are that when one of these went for scrap, it actually did end up on Mythbusters being squished with the um, uh, by atmospheric pressure. But right now, anyway, the Covered Monkey is here. So if everybody is ready, the big announcement for tonight is um, as of the beginning of April, I work for DCC Concepts, so uh, the YouTube channel will be continuing separately and independently from that. Um, the, the YouTube channel has always been a separate thing from my day job. Effectively, what I've done is I've changed day jobs. 
Um, but my day job will be from the beginning of April working for DCC Concepts. So you, you guys are going to be seeing an awful lot more of me. We're going to be heading up um, some new video content for DCC Concepts. So we'll be producing videos for them which will show you um, how to use their products, how to DCC fit models with their products. Um, things like that. And we're going to build that channel and make it uh, you know, a great place to go to find out about all things DCC concepts. And I'm really, really looking forward to this. So this does involve me commuting to settle, but um, it's much less hours than the job I currently do. So hopefully, um, even though it's over five days a week instead of four, this is going to be a really great move and it's doing something that I love and they always say that if your job is your hobby then actually it's it's not a chore anymore and I'm really looking forward to this. The guys at DCC Concepts are a great bunch of people. Uh, we've been and done an interview there before, really enjoyed um, going up there, reviewed loads of the products and um, this is going to be an exciting new development, but like I said, the YouTube channel, the Jenny Monday Club, is continuing as separate and independent from that. So really, really looking forward to this. And I bet you didn't see that coming. And somebody's going to say, you posted something like this as a tongue-in-cheek comment on the Jenny Monday Club wagon announcement thread when somebody nearly guessed correctly what the, that announcement was. And um, it was actually funny because Richard Brighton from a DCC concept sent me a message and went, <laughs> what? and it's like, yeah, sometimes you can hide the truth is best hidden in plain sight. And I guess nobody picked up on that. But that tongue in cheek comment I posted was not, in fact, tongue in cheek. It was just dangled out there to see if anybody would notice. But yes, so that's where we're up to. Uh, Retro Mickey 82, hi to you. Manthony 1956, um, uh, Crossways Point Junction, hi to you. Uh, and Garthian says, Congratulations, Jenny. A well deserved change of career. Maybe you'll get some Saturdays free to visit Statford on your own accord. Certainly, yes. So, um, right. Um, what else have we got? Um, Iron Horse Heathen says, She'll be test blowing up decoders. Yeah, strap in, because Kansas is going bye-bye. <laughs> no, I, I think, actually, I, I'll, I'll get into trouble if I just sit there and, like, pop the um, pop the decoders. Mm -hmm. um, Roof Railways says, Jenny, should I DCC? Could you recommend some tips for beginners and some controllers? Yeah, these are all great ideas for um, video content that we're working out with DCC concepts. But certainly, um, you may remember as well, I did the review video of Rails Connect decoders, very good budget level decoders. Trainomatic, still a really great brand, and I want to take this opportunity as well to thank Trainomatic for their support over the last 18 months or so. They've been a really, really good sponsor of the channel, and they've been great. They have. So, um, a huge thanks to Trainomatic for supporting me through the last 18 months. Um, obviously, uh, now moving on to DCC Concepts, I'll be working for them. But it's it's been an amazing journey, and I couldn't have done this without you guys. You guys have helped to make this happen. So I really do look forward to um, seeing people, obviously, uh, when the showroom there reopens. I'm sure a few of you guys will be coming up to DCC Concepts to buy bits and pieces. So um, you might be seeing me there as well. So uh, And they've got a fabulous layout, Ribblehead Viaduct which is amazing so um, they might be they might be going oh could you bring your static grass thing and just put some grass down <laughs> oh you might find this interesting mm. uh richard brighton says sorry did someone just mention that you'll be getting days off <laughs> 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 days off <laughs> what are these that you speak of i don't get any days off so why should you <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but um, I get get evenings, and that's something actually that my current day job is like 15 hour shifts. That and is really long. It's... Yeah, I, I can do easily do 50 hours plus over four days in my current day job, and um, it, it's one of those things, you know, you kind of, uh, let me, let's change the, oh, you, you have, all right. I have the buttons as well. It's, it's one of those things that um, I think a lot of people, you kind of, I always describe it as being like, you, you start to wear a groove, you get comfortable in um, the job that you're in, 
and the more the longer you're there the, the deeper you wear the groove and the high, harder it is to climb out and it sort of gets to feel safe even if you don't like the job you're currently in it feels safe and um i think this is this is a great opportunity so a big big thank you to dcc concepts for offering me this job yeah and um really looking forward to starting at the beginning of april uh, right. Uh, AFD Comp says, Jennifer, what will be your role in DCC Concepts? Well, I can tell you for a start that she will be uh, taking her well-known uh, role from Crime Watch as a shelf to her new role at <laughs> DCC Concepts, where she'll be uh, a shelf. <laughs> um, I'll be producing videos and dealing with uh, some of the social media stuff as well. So uh, it's all very exciting. Hello to Theo Me, Fat Wallet Boy 2, Belmont Junction, Finbar Mitchell, Gwyn Reese Davies, Iron Horse Heathen. It says, uh, like Q, but J, Jenny Bond, licensed to blow. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, matron. Amtrak Junction says, would you both be going to the MRYCG meetup at the end of July somewhere in the Midlands? Love to see you both if you were coming. Um, and, uh, um, yeah um we'll try we'll try and work something out actually um so that would be great actually because i know i did um uh did meet a lot of guys from mrycg at warley in 2019 and of course with everything else that's been going on um oh let me just What's check wrong? some i'm just trying to my phone's decided like did you drop your brain again yeah it's no i don't want to download an app i hate do I just hate, hate websites that do that? They go, oh, you appear to be using an iPhone. Can we shove some worthless app in your face? It's like, no, just show me the website. <laughs> um, so a big, big thank you to Mark Wilson, who has sent me £10. says, happy birthday, me oh, I posted you, some more. It always says, picture, and then it cuts it off. Let me just see the full message. Um, it says, happy birthday, my duck. I posted some more pictures of Swindon Works yesterday, having just added some miniature fluorescent lamps. Yes, I saw those. I think they were from the scale model scenery range as well. <laughs> and they look amazing. The Swindon Works um, that you're building is incredible. And anybody who hasn't seen that, do go over to the Facebook page, group page, gr group, and um, see what Mark Wilson's been posting. The Swindon Works diorama, and it is absolutely exquisite. So thank you ever so much for sharing those pictures. Thank you so, so much for the £10 as well. Um, and it's, um, I, I just feel blown away, you guys' generosity. I know it's my birthday, but... Even so, <laughs> even so Thank you so, so much. Um, I've got a special message uh, direct to uh, Facebook Messenger from Guardian saying, can you please give me my breath back? That shelf joke made me laugh too much. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So he does that, yeah. So Rail Ale Bob say, says, "What about Trainomatic? Trainomatic's still on the go." Um, and as I said before, that they're, they're still going. It's just um, from the uh, sometime in the beginning of April, um, because of contractual reasons. Obviously, you can't work for a competitor at the same time as as working for another company that is um, doing exactly the same thing. So. Um, the sponsorship with Trainomatic uh, is obviously going to have to come to an end. Um, it's um, you know, one of those things um, because otherwise it's it's very difficult to, if not impossible, to effectively advertise a product that is a main competitor to your employer. You just yeah. can't do that. People and I, will start saying, "Well, uh... yeah." But I mean, I've got everything but pr uh, everything. Um, what's the word? Uh, the turn of, I, I've got nothing, nothing but praise for Trainomatic. They've been wonderful. They've been great. Some great products, and they will still be selling those great products. Still go to the tramfabrique.nl website for the UK distributor. They are still there, still selling them, and uh, it may well be the case that you'll see um, their logos turning up on perhaps. Uh, some other YouTube channels will um, pick up where I've had to leave off, but nothing but praise for Sven and everybody at Trainomatic as well. They have been such a great support for the channel. Um, uh, Pete Clark says, happy birthday, happy anniversary and congrats on the job. Thank you ever so much. David Scott says, well done on the new job. Better start saving up for a snowplow. Oh yeah, for the Garden Railway. Um, I can't no, remember. forgetting to work in the snow. Oh right, yes. <laughs> um, Don't that... worry, we're just going to catapult a 
I've got a massive trebuchet being built in the garden. Yeah, given that I've seen some video footage of what settle can be like when it snows, I, I haven't yet plucked up the courage to go, so is there a procedure if I get up in the morning and go, oh, it's snowing? Never yeah. getting to settle in this. Yes, you have to swim through the snow. Show dedication. <laughs> Now, I know that quite a lot of the people who work at uh, DCC Concepts do actually live in Settle during the week, and I can see that that may well end up being something um, that I end up doing as well, uh, purely yeah. because of the amount of commuting time. I'm going to get you a tent. You mm. can live under a bridge. <laughs> right. Iron Horse Heathen says, this explains further why the sponsor has switched over to SMS. Uh, 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 uh. No. No, that's the live stream sponsor. The live stream sponsor is always separate from um, the actual, um, the, the, the pre-recorded videos as well. So I'm just going to uh, get right up to date. Stevie Film has incredibly generously donated $24.99. Says, happy birthday, Jenny. Happy anniversary, Jenny and Zoe. Thank you Thank ever you so much. That is so generous. Um, Aiden's Railway says, what loss for Trinomatic losing you, Jenny? I know, I know, unfortunately, it's just one of those things because uh, you just can't advertise what effectively would be a competitor to mm -hmm. your new job it's just one of those things it's not a statement uh, about either company it's just simply you know if you worked for ford i think you know ford would quite rightly yeah you know especially in a high profile job if you worked for them you couldn't then advertise say voxel it's just one of those things um the other sponsorships that we do the other um working with all the other companies that will continue uh, as usual. It's, it's just anything that's directly um, the, exactly the same primary line of business. Uh, Richard Brighton says, we have a sofa bed at the flat. You'll regret saying that because you're basically, I'm going to be sofa surfing here, aren't I? <laughs> you wake up and go, oh my God, we got Jenny on the sofa. And it's like, hello. <laughs> um, How did she get in here? Uh, Abby Watson, hello to you, says, I love model trains and hello. It's, it's great to uh, see you and hope I find you well. And don't forget, everybody, tickle that like button, share the stream as well, and subscribe to the channel uh, to be the first to know about new things as and when they go up. Manchin1956 has an interesting question. How far is considered a long commute in Great Britain? Yeah, because I know in America, some people will, will quite happily trundle along three hours each I don't know way. about happily. Yeah, probably not happily, but um, um, see, my father used to commute for, uh, for a period of about five years. He commuted from Bolton to Stoke-on-Trent. That's a very long commute time, five years. Was he uh, crawling? Um, no, he commuted every day down to Stoke-on-Trent. It's about 60 miles, I think he said. But he said it had the advantage of being on the motorway. So you're talking about um, it was... Um, um, not long at all. It, well, you reckon it was an hour each way, which is quite a long commute. Um, I know some people down south um, have very long commutes. I know people who lived in Chatham. I wouldn't say an who, hour's a long commute. I mean, I used to no. have to travel for 45 minutes just to get to school. Yeah, um, and I know some people down south who work in London but live actually quite a way outside who have to commute in. Uh, I know one person who lived in Chatham had to commute into central London. I've heard of people commuting into London from places like Bishop Stortford, which is in Essex, from Southend, um, even from like um, uh, places like uh, Banbury, Basingstoke. Um, so some people have a lot longer commute than that, um, but it's about an hour and a half each way I timed it up. Uh, David Scott says, if you worked for Ford and announced you were going to a competitor, you were immediately marched off the premises. I mean, yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Um, yeah, roof rules used to be different. Mm. Um, yeah, there used to be a time where you could be fired for being a member of a trade union. Things have moved on a lot from that. In fact, for a lot of women as well, it's, it's easy to forget this, um, but there was once a time where if you became pregnant, they would dismiss you as a woman. Um, so we have really moved on a lot in uh, in these uh, these more enlightened days. Garthian says this camera view is reversed for some reason. I can tell you the reason. It's because Ops won't let us turn it around without yeah, mirroring um, every other yeah. thing. I, ca I keep meaning to explain that. So you'll ha I'm afraid you'll have to live with a mirror image on that. I know you're used to the previous uh, mountain camera. Now we've replaced the camera, and for some reason Ops refuses stubbornly 
to acknowledge us reversing the thing. And in fact, you then go through all the other cameras and it's reversed one of the other cameras. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. it demands one to be reversed. My goodness. Oh, thank you ever so much. Robert Ward has very, very generously donated £20 saying happy birthday and anniversary. Oh, thank you so much. That is incredibly generous. Thank you very you. much. So, um, absolutely wonderful. Jay says, I hate long commutes to and from work. It's lost time out of your day that you're not getting paid for a chance to enjoy. Um, I remember I had to have a, a weird commute because I had to walk from my house to a train station, mm. which took about uh, half an hour, and then get a train to a metro station and get the metro out to where I walk. Oh, is that worked when you... in a walk. Is that so, when you worked at South Gosf- Gosford? Yeah, when I was at the uh, Revenue and Customs, essentially. Right, and, right. Um, well, valuation office. And mm. what I used to do was just uh, grab a CD. And I could, and these days you'd do a podcast or something. You'd power just, walk with tunage on it. Yeah, it, and I'd just listen to whatever was on my uh, CD player. That's mm. the way I used to do it. Big Finnish audio mm. plays. Oh, some of them are good. Like oh, the, um, uh, yeah. the Strontium, Strontium Dog. Dog my if you have never listened to Strontium Dog on uh, from uh, Big Finnish Productions, you need to. It is the funniest sci-fi you could ever imagine. It's, it's fantastic. And it's, got si- it. it's Simon Pegg um, as... Um, as a mutant bounty hunter. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it is incredibly funny. Yeah. yeah. It's just... Just find it, listen to it. It's still available it. on Big Finish as well. Oh, website. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, big hello to Wardle Road. Uh, Jason Pryor well says, Hi, Jenny and Zoe. Well done in the new position at DCC Concepts and happy birthday and anniversary. Driving up to Cooper, Scotland tomorrow from our yard in Stowmarket in Suffolk with my Category 3 truck. Gosh, yes, it's a long trip, but um, from having driven trucks myself, driving a truck is very different to driving a car. It's it's, it's more sedate in a way, um, and you tend to stick to the major trunk roads. Um, so I used to think nothing of just pootling along for four and a half hours in a truck. Um, Speaking of commuting cessation railways, they are finally tearing down the awful bus station at Durham and replacing it. But that bus station, it's a rite of passage. You have to, <laughs> what, you be- have to feel sick and uh, annoyed about being there at least once. I mean, yeah. it's been there since you, the eighties. You have to have been mugged there at least once. Um, I, I actually had a guy one time. I thought he was trying to pick a fight with me. Uh-huh. And it turned out he'd seen his own reflection in a mirror and was so drunk he couldn't <laughs> tell. He thought that his reflection was trying to start a fight. Oh, that is that is pro- a professional Geordie there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have you know that we are Dunelmians, not Geordies. Well, no, he was a professional Geordie. He clearly got lost. <laughs> uh, Penelane TMD, hello to you. Garthian says, my dad, before he retired, used to drive all over the country in his job as a photocopier service engineer. He could do nearly 1,000 miles in a day at times. Yeah, I can imagine it. I mean, my father, um, prior to him working in Stoke-on-Trent, um, his previous job, same company, he was managing a place for about a year, 18 months, in Bristol, in Avonmouth, but we still lived up in Bolton. Now, he didn't commute every single day. He would go down on the Monday morning and he would either live in hotels or he'd go across the Severn Bridge to um, Estragonlice and stay over with my grandparents in their spare room because they were a lot closer to Avonmouth. Okay, I need to address something. Mm -hmm. Abby Watson, we do not do crash compilations. These locomotives cost a fortune when yeah. I smash them together. Yeah, um, it's it's not that kind of um, uh, of, of thing. These are our models, not toys. Um, so, um, <clears throat> you know, I, 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 I'm not going to um, pass judgment on what other people do with their stuff, but you're talking about thousands upon thousands of pounds of what are actually quite delicate things. Yeah, um, and now it, it makes me interested because uh, remember the crash test dummies? They were a big thing. What, the, the band? <laughs> no, the, the toys. They were a big thing for a oh, few yes, years. Oh, yes, yes. And the entire point was that you could smash them together and you would replicate crashes. Bits of it would fall off, bits of it was designed to fire off and things like that. Mm-hmm. Is there no market for that? We get uh, people asking about crashes all the time. So 
is there not I don't part know. of a, a, like a toy train where you can uh, do this sort of thing? I don't know. I mean, the thing is, it's very difficult to replicate a real crash in miniature because the physics don't scale down. Mm. Um, but I, I guess it kind of... Sometimes you've got to remember that a real crash is quite a horrific thing. Um, well, so it's a car accident, but they managed to make a toy out of it in order to teach safety. Did it work? Yes. Hmm. Deaths from automobile accidents plummet when, when yeah, stuff but, like this comes out. Uh, but um, the technology, safety technology in cars has moved on a lot. I mean, that is true even, as well. I mean, the, but the, how many kids would uh, balk at the idea of not wearing a safety belt? Oh no, you feel naked when you get in a vehicle exactly, without but your... Exactly, they never uh, used to. No, I mean, and the funny thing is I can remember my driving instructor, who was quite an old guy, him um, waxing lyrical about when he started as a driving instructor in the early 70s, and he said he, it used to, nobody would bat an eyelid when people would say, oh, well, on the way to the test centre, we'll just swing by my house and I'll have a stiff drink to settle my nerves before the test. What? And people used to do that. And it was considered like a normal type thing. And now you do that and people would look at you like you just... Well, I that's your first major fail. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and now it's just a big social no-no. And apparently when seatbelts came in, they had a, quite a big job to get people to buckle up. Yeah. Mm. Um, Aiden's Railway says... Oh, sorry, you've read that one. Matt Ovell, big hello to you. Since working from home in lockdown, despite saving so much time, I miss listening to the radio on my commute. I know what you mean. As I only ever listen to the radio at work um, when I'm driving somewhere. So um, it's going to be interesting because obviously I'll be commuting at different times now. So um, you kind of, um, I think I might miss some of the programs. And like, <laughs> this is embarrassing. It's my, well, I don't know whether it's embarrassing, but... Um, it's my 42nd birthday, and I've rediscovered Radio 1. Not during the day. It's still like having a rusty screwdriver jabbed in your ear during the day. But in the evening, people like um, uh, Annie Mack and, and that. It's actually... I, I always loved dance music and the Ibiza scene. So it's really nice to find, actually, some of the new music. And over the past year or so... I've actually discovered so much new music. It's like this new dawn where I'm getting interested in music again, in new music. Okay, this guy keeps saying the same thing. Um, yeah, no, there's somebody who keeps saying that. Even Terry, you only need to say it once. Um, says, hi, I can't believe that, but I won Bankman 2 hat from the World of Railways Virtual Exhibition. Yeah, we've had on over the weekend the World of Railways Virtual Exhibition. We've had some amazing announcements on that. I know Planet Industrials uh, did an announcement of, I think it's a Ruston um, kit. It's like a resin kit for a, a locomotive, which actually sold out. It did so well from what I've seen from their post. Um, I have actually shared some of the posts, including that one, from uh, Planet Industrials on the Facebook group. Um, so go and check it out. It looks a lovely model, but they've apparently sold out. They're going to be um, ordering up some more of those. Um, but also the other big announcement over the weekend, we've had Daypol quite on the heels from announcing the O-Gage B4. They've also announced some of the other variants of the uh, GWR moguls. So um, it's actually really great to see, and it's something that I'm a huge advocate of. When manufacturers tool up for locomotives, for rolling stock as well, but especially for locomotives, to put the thought into um, having slides in the tool that allow them to represent different versions of locomotives. Uh, and it was something that when Bankman retooled their J72, I always thought it was a missed opportunity that they didn't make allowances in the tooling. And I know that there is a cost involved here, but it was the probably the best opportunity for us to ever see a J71 in model form if they'd have been able to have done the tooling such that that similar locomotive could have been made from the tooling suite um, because um, they, they didn't do that. So we've basically lost an opportunity of a ready to run uh, J71. But when it came to Oxford Rail with the J27 that they've announced, I have been speaking to Scott Rhodes over at Oxford Rail, and um, they are apparently progressing really, really well. Obviously, there have been massive setbacks with COVID, 
um, uh, all the Oxrail staff working from home as well has slowed things down. And we've just had Chinese New Year, but he said that they are progressing really, really well. So I'm really looking forward to those. But of course, the tooling suite for the J27 has they've been very carefully done things so that the J26 will be coming um, uh, sometime afterwards as well. And I think that's a great way of making models because if a manufacturer makes one but doesn't do the similar related model, then nobody else is likely to jump in and do that other model. So I think it's a great way of getting these things to the market. Uh, big hello to Nigel Cole, Sue at Putnam Junction. Uh, uh, Donkey's Model Railway says, uh, I had the most hilarious train commute to school, 15 minutes walk to the station, 2 minutes train ride and 10 minutes walk to the school, but that 2 minutes included a tunnel and a viaduct. Hmm. Um, yeah, uh, I, could, I mean, I, I always used to like, when I lived up in the northeast, um, I had quite a horrible commute because I had to walk from one side of Durham to the other to get to the railway station. But then I'd commute by train to Newcastle Central from Durham and it's where the actual inspiration for Weir Yard comes from because of course every single day twice a day we passed Tyne Marshland Yard and I remember looking out in awe at, at that for that facility as was back then um but um then I had a long walk from well it wasn't that long a walk um but it was certainly a steep walk it wasn't too bad going down the hill but coming back up I used to have to walk from Newcastle Central Station all the way down to the quayside um Evan Terry the cupboard monkey is the cupboard monkey uh, needs no introduction? Sorry, uh, who's asking? Uh, Evan Terry is asking who's the cupboard monkey. So there's Hello. the cupboard monkey. Um, uh, I live in the New cupboard. Junction. You won't let me out. New Junction says my commute is a three-hour round trip. Ah, but you do have the advantage that you're working an awful lot from home. But um, great to see you, uh, New Junction. Uh, Simon Williams says, hi all, sorry I'm late, happy anniversary ladies. Thank you ever so much. Um, it only feels, feels like five minutes. It's married 12 years today and uh, looking at the time, yes, uh, it, is, it is past uh, 12 years, but it feels like five minutes. And that's- Does it? It does for me, I don't know about you. <laughs> um, all right, Stevie Film, hi to you. Uh, Patrick Furlong, the Growler Blackwood End Gauge Layer, Amtrak Junction, Bangor East Junction, Carl Braun. Cooper and District Model Railway Club says, shame we are not able to open the club or we could suggest a visit to the club room. And that is something actually that I, I'm, um, you know, I'm not going to speak out to him and say, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. We have been uh, wanting to do uh, through the train room dawn. Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, want to, we do want to get out and about and sort of pick up where we left off before lockdown. But it's something as well. Um, I will see whether DCC concepts are interested in the idea of going out and visiting places and actually seeing how people are using their products in a real layout environment. I think that that would be a, a great way to not just explore it from a commercial sense from the brand, but also to get out and meet people. And I think that's always really, really great thing to do. Um, hi, Kent. Uh, many more people now commute from Ashford International to St Pancras as it's only 38 minutes where when I was a boy it would sometimes take 1 hour 50 minutes and then only to Charing Cross. Oh my wow. word. Barry Turner says, is that the TARDIS on the horizon or am I like well out of date? Oh, you're well out of date. Oh, that word. <laughs> uh, Zach says, uh, I love the new model you and Auntie Zoe have been designing. Oh, I'm considering hello getting Zach. One. Oh, thank you ever so much. Um, Zach is my nephew. So and, uh, uh, Tell your mum thank you very much for the... The present she gave to Auntie Jenny. Yes, it arrived just as we were setting up. So um, a big, big thank you for that. Gosh, it's, it's, it's been such a great day. In fact, it's my second favourite birthday of all time. My favourite, of course, being the day I got married. Um, I and know. You guys, you'll never beat this. I got her a <laughs> wife for a <her> birthday. <laughs> no, but I got to flaunt around and go, who's the bride? <laughs> and now oh, you've got, got a follow I, I spent a day. I spent a day being a functional alcoholic because they just plied me with bolly. I, it was weird. Like, yeah. I, I, realized I don't we remember were, finishing a bottle, but we started hundreds. <laughs> we actually paid for that. but I Did don't. Well, yeah, it was part of the package, and uh, what? but I'd forgotten that uh, I paid for it. It's like what the bottomless but, Bollinger bottle? Yeah, who's giving me all this alcohol and wine? And I thought, hang on, I know it's like it was part of the wedding package. Why I didn't paid you for say? It. I'd have drunk even more. I'd have been like, like I tell you what, 
forget the glass, tip the ice out of the ice bucket and go, right, just keep pouring until I say... No, I'm not going to give you a straw (laughs) in a bucket. (laughs) Oh, God. If I'd have known that, I'd have been swiping the bottles. (laughs) Ah, so um, AFD comp, hi to you. Flymo Chairman 1. Wardle Road says, my commute from my new place to central London is only just over an hour. Um, Richard Swiderski spotted the TARDIS. I think we can beat all of that. Stephen Simmons says, My usual commute is about eight steps from the back door to the garden office. Well, I'm sorry to say that, Stephen, I can uh, I can beat that because I leave my bedroom door, turn left and enter my office. She, it, even if it's raining, she doesn't go outside. She doesn't even have to put pants on. It's really most disturbing. Yeah. So, other news <laughs> going on. Yes, I do. I work on video. Yeah, but until you do that. But, um... Right, also, yeah, I forgot to mention, the theme for today, King Cole won the um, the actual poll. So, going round, let's see if we can, let's play Chase the Train, see if we can, so we should be able to see there, we've got the 16-ton mineral train going by, about to be bowled by, it's a train of Hornby HTO hoppers, and mixed in with those are a few of the Acura scale H-U-O hoppers. So I've got a whole host of different coal wagons out and about. And some really long trains out here on Weir Yard. Um, Creeping Jane says, didn't Triang used to have a wagon that exploded in a crash? Oh, the exploding wagon. I don't think it was in a crash. It was the explode. It was like notionally supposedly had explosives in it, didn't it? It had a big spring. But uh, yeah, Richard Swiderski as well confirms this. Hornby used to do an exploding wagon. Uh, Garthia says the old Hornby battle space sets were designed to look like they'd exploded 1970s or early 1980s, mm. I think. See, this is what's missing. The toy and fun aspect of something. Yeah. The, I know the player trains is bringing stuff like that back, but... Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that range, actually. The, I, I think the, there's still room for the uh, interactive uh, let's scratch them type of thing. Yeah, I suppose so. <clears throat> the nearly historical railroad says hello all from the old USA. Oh, thank you very much. So you will probably there we are for all our American viewers. Don't forget to look out for our American Limited Models uh, review. Uh, very very kindly, Robert Steers of American Limited Models and uh, the San Juan Model Company. Very very kindly sent over six of these wagons for review. There's quite a weight to them. And I'll they also are. As well, very mm, uh, surprisingly heavy. I'd also like to name check magazine The Prospector. So I'm just going to just try and move in close enough that people can see. So it very kindly sent over The Prospector. It's a really interesting magazine. It's an American uh, magazine of the, the Rio Grande Modeling and Historical Society. Um, but Robert Steers has actually got an article in here. And this is of particular interest to those of you who followed my Menoth Tatus build, the Potato Mountain, narrow gauge layout, because look at this fold out wow. uh, fold out diagram there. This is Mountaineer, which is a double fairly locomotive built for the Denver and Rio, Denver and Rio Grande Railway uh, in 1873. So I was really interested to read that article. And actually the whole magazine is really interesting. Because it's got things like plans of, um, I think, is this, um, where is this? The, the Minica Steel Plant, um, somewhere in America. Really interesting article. So thank you ever so much. Robert Steers sent uh, the magazine over, um, just tucked into the box with the um, the wagons as well. So look out for that. It's going to be a forthcoming video. Yep, Weir Yard is going ever so slightly American. Uh, but I love the American outlines of HO Railroad Modelling. Um, I know um, I've been a guest on What's Neat this week with Ken Patterson uh, a couple of times. But I know that Robert Steers, uh, I believe, has been either been on there or is about to be on there as a guest uh, to be interviewed about the American Limited models. You be careful there. I can see you destroying something. Um, so I'm really I looking forward to that. that. And I have asked him to forward me a link to make sure that we let people know if they want to effectively find out more about the products I'm going to be reviewing. Right. Um, what else? Uh, we've also, the Hellion Class 25s have hit the shops. Uh, we talked a bit about this last week, but you will see going around, I'm just, um, is that, yeah, that is in shot. So we're going to see going past. So if you look at the little box where I'm inhabiting down here, 
Um, there's a Hellion Class 25 Tamworth Castle in what's known as the ice cream van livery going round as um, 25912. So this was, I think there was six of them uh, reclassified as 25 stroke nines as a subclass. I don't think they physically had any alterations. It was just simply a pool of locomotives that was to be to try and win some, uh, I think it was a, uh, road salt traffic from ICI. Traffic never happened. The locomotives therefore never really got used, but Tamworth Castle does survive. And Hellion have produced the model of it as it ran in the, I think it's late 1980s. And it's such an eye-catching livery. Model Rail did commission Backman to do the locomotive probably about 20 years ago. So it has appeared in that form before, but it's the older Backman model. So I was really, really pleased to be able to pick that up as a different livery for the Class 25. There's about 12 different versions, maybe 13 if you include the TMC one, which is the two-tone green with the tops number. I believe it's the final 25 known to carry BR two-tone green. It looks to be a great commission. We've also got a um, video coming up where I've done new old stock. Now I will give you a little hint about this. Um, I have picked a different, I know we did Hereford Model Centre before, so I've been out, I've oh hunted no, around. Me yeah, I know, I'm waiting for, um, um, I can't remember who it was who kept saying that every time and we mentioned a shop that had but new old stock bargains in it. Like, no, it's my stash of bargains, you're buying my bargains. Because <laughs> they <laughs> they were notionally wait, like really, really uh, wanting to pick up all this stuff. I, it's, it's all very funny. Of course um, it was all fun and games until someone loses their chance to buy all their bargains. No, it's all fun and games until somebody loses an eye and then it's fun and games without depth perception. Um, but yes, I found another retailer. I have been exploring their online catalogue. You can buy online. Um, again, it's going to be another name that's reasonably familiar to you guys. Uh, and I got a, I filmed the video um, highlighting some of the incredible bargains. And in fact, um, I don't know whether it's... No, it's not quite in shot. Um, if you could see just ever so slightly more to the right... Um, oh... The cupboard monkey's going to break it now. Tiny. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right, you've just caught a glimpse. There's the white van um, on the extreme right-hand side underneath the loading gauge. That is my bargain of choice from the um, new old stock video that I just filmed. Uh, and it's uh, when you learn what it is, it's amazing value. So do look out for that. You, I think you'll like this. Grongston Model Railway says, unfortunately... The things us oldies played with as a child would never see the light of day now because health and safety wouldn't allow it because the modern person has no common sense to use it. And uh, I used to want to say, no, they'd, they'd be all right with it. And then I saw recently a pizza box that said, please remove pizza from box before eating. Um, I remember seeing a packet of peanuts that said caution may contain nuts. And it's well, I like, hope it does. I've bought you know, some nuts. In, in perfectly honest, I'd be disappointed if it didn't. <laughs> uh, Juliet Jones asks, how do I do smoke effects on steam locomotives? Uh, there's, there's a few, a ma ways, yeah, there's there? a few, lo a few manufacturers manufacture smoke units. Uh, Sooth is one that immediately springs to mind. They are an aftermarket edition. Um, they can be a bit fiddly. Double O locomotives don't tend to lend themselves massively on size um, to be able to fit these, but it can be done, but it is a bit involved. Um, so um, th there are manufacturers out there. Uh, B Mozza says clunk click every trip. Oh, gosh, I am well behind on comments. I'm Just going to, I'm going to um, oh. skip up to date um, because, uh, I, as I always say, if I if I haven't said anything about your what, the comment you've left or the question you've asked, I'm not ignoring you. It's quite simply that the comments do come in so quickly. It's so so difficult to keep up with them. Um, but James Pet says I approve of amazing value. Oh well, uh, don't we all? Um, yes, I would love a drink. Have we got any Coke? No. Uh, can I have some juice? You want some juice? Juice. Is it loose or good this goods? No. Uh, the Angel Share Model Railways. Hello to you. It says hello, Jen and Zoe. Happy birthday and congrats on Wagon Commission. Thank you ever so much. Peter Leyland says a friend of mine waited 20 minutes for the train to pass in the USA. Yeah, they do have some very, very long trains out there. Um, it's a big country. You might as well say yeah. Yeah, and um, 
it's, I think it's in Lagrange, Lagrange in Kansas, I want to say. Um, they have trains that run down the centre of the street. And if you're on the wrong side of the street, I actually did see a video where the UPS guy rocks up, parks, goes over the street to deliver a parcel. The train comes and trundles down the street and he ends up on the wrong side of the street from his van and has to wait a good 20 minutes for the train to pass. <laughs> Which I can imagine if you're on time delivery is a bit of a heart, heart, uh, heartache. Uh, Wangok says, come on guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh, of course. Manthony 1956 so the cars probably meet the NMRA minimum weight requirements for rolling stock, which is one ounce plus an additional 0.5 ounce for every inch in length. Uh, a fine Metsitsa wine says, do you have Thomas and Friends? I don't, but um, I'm quite interested. The all new Bankman range, I think um, I do like the look at them. And it is something that I will most likely explore for some future reviews. Um, there's certain ones I'm waiting to appear in the UK. Um, Donald and Douglas do interest me. Bill and Ben. <laughs> the flower pot man. No, but the, the little uh, port of par type dock. Shunters. Um, and Henry as well uh, is another model. I'm waiting to appear on the UK market. Um, and then it will be something that I'd look to evaluate. Um, James Pett says, one of the especially interesting things about US model railroading is the emphasis on operations, which is what I find fun about model railways. Peter Leyland asks, Jenny, have you had any invites to exhibitions in light of the lifting of restrictions? Yes, I have. Um, Minneth Tatus will be, uh, hopefully, at uh, Alexandra Palace in 2022, the March 2022 exhibition, uh, when things hopefully have all got back to normal. So uh, that is the first one that I've had an invite to. Um, I will be doing quite a few exhibitions, obviously working for DCC Concepts, I will be at all the exhibitions that DCC Concepts attend, and it's a great excuse actually to get to so many more exhibitions. It's one thing that I've really regretted over the last few years, is just not having the time to get to exhibitions, so I'm really looking forward oh, to that right. possibility. Well, the last year you haven't been allowed. Never mind the time. Last few years. You know what I meant now. Shut up, cupboard monkey. Beverage of choice is just um, council pop, which for those of you who are not familiar, council pop is the water that comes out of your tap in your kitchen uh, with a, a wee dab of juice. Um, Shanghai264359, uh, hello to you. Uh, Pete Clark asks, is that supposed to be pushing or pulling? Um, there are two locomotives, two class 25s that are on a shuttle. It's this is the to push me for you. Yeah, um, one of them is actually got a HCO um, coke hopper, uh, just for a bit of operational interest. And these are the DCC Concepts ABC shuttle modules. You do like them. Um, that I did do a full review on um, a few months ago. Now, actually, it would be sometime last year. Really do love these. They do bring a whole new operational interest to a layout. If, like me, you're a bit of a uh, DCC newbie, it's a great way of adding extra functionality with relative ease to an existing layout. Are you all right there, Cupboard Monkey? Do you need no. to go and lie down somewhere in a darkened room? I've tried to hang on as long as I can because uh, I wanted to do the videos for you. But... Well, we could... Um... Oh, there. Well, are you, are you? Do you want to go and lie down somewhere? You can lie I'm down sorry. on the floor if you want. I'm really sorry, guys. I, 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 I had to cut my live stream short earlier on. But she I'm did actually. Well. Those of you who are in the uh, Game Hammer Classic Gaming live stream, um, how how short did you have to cut it? Um, instead of being two hours, it was forty-five minutes. That's an absolute shame. But I know health is always important. Uh, I've uh, just got such a, you know. <laughs> We were saying the other day that, wow, we haven't had a cold this year, and I think we just turned to fit. Yeah, and the cold went, oh, you think that, do you? Mm, so, well, we're going to put you square on that. I'm, I'm actually going to say sorry, guys. Mm. We'll, we'll keep the videos for next week, Yeah, um, because I'm going to have to go and lie down. Big hello to J94, J Paul Anderson, uh, Tim's Trains, Modellings and Adventures, Kevin ZZ, um... Uh, Irish train guy, Penelain TMD says, 
Um, Jenny, I'm shocked you don't have Thomas and Friends. I did as a child, it has to be said. I did have a Percy. I, I have no idea, no idea whatever happened to that. Richard I never Wright had them myself, but I did have the Thomas the Tank Engine action game, which <laughs> we are going to have to do a video on. Yeah. Uh, Gary Lewis, absolutely correct. Jawtooth, um, very strange name for a channel, but actually it's a really great channel. Um, I have watched quite a few of his videos about a Jawtooth YouTube channel shows some great US Railroad street running episodes. Yeah, I, I really thoroughly enjoyed actually watching quite a few of his videos. Richard Brighton says, hopefully we will be at the Great Electric in October 2021. So boom, yeah. Oh, I didn't do it. Nobody saw me do it. You can't prove anything. That's an interesting. What has just popped? Right, Ooh. um, where's the class 20, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, that's come off the track, so, but hopefully all should be fine. You really need to move that reset button. Yeah, yeah. So Did I just hear a very low, uh, oh, 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 stopping, that's fine. Didn't want it to jump off in the wrong direction. Um, but that's okay. It was just uh, the Hellion 25 had ridden up over the uh, the point. Okay, I'm going to go and lie down. I'm sorry, so, guys, unfortunately, the, the cupboard monkey um, actually suffers from lupus and has had a lupus flare up yeah. for the last few days, just sort of like, nah, around. I'm going to take a bicky there, and I would love for you to take the rest of the bickies. You'd love the me to eat the rest of the biscuits. Yes, because would love to lose weight as well so uh well, madden I can't do that for you uh madden steam railway says when i went to when i want to purchase more trains equipment i go to john duckfield in chelmsford essex not only does he has he do good <laughs> does he do Try good again, I, i'm just reading word for word what people are typing <laughs> Uh, I always go to John Duckfield in Chelmsford, Essex. Not only has he got good used stock, he also has new old stock and the latest models. Yeah, there are some great model shops out there. Um, some of the lesser well-known ones are actually a good place to hunt for new old stock. And as we showed with the Hereford Model Centre video, um, there's a lot of good stuff out there. It's also the case, um, I showed you as well, uh, well, I will be showing you as well as another shop. It's actually TMC, the model center. I filmed the video. I've already bought a load of stuff. In fact, some of the things that you um, you will see running around, the highlight I've just tried to show you in the corner a little bit earlier on, but the 22-ton um, um, bolster wagons and plate wagons as well are actually going around behind the Hellion Class 25. Garthian. We'll be booking a ticket for Ali Pali next year, so it'd be great to see you, definitely. Uh, MGM MGM um, says, I new to this, just found this. Can I ask what this is? This is the Monday Club. It's a place where like-minded people can sit and hang out online, virtually, safely distanced, and talk all things model rail. We talk about the news what new models have been announced. Uh, we just talk with each other and it's just a great place to hang out. And I know that through lockdown, there's a lot of people who you know, may be um, separated from family, separated from friends because of lockdown restrictions, unable to go to model rail clubs because they've been closed. Exhibitions are not on. It's just a great way of getting a couple of hours of vitamin train um, and you know, just keeping sane. And that's what it's all about. So don't forget everybody, tickle that like button, share this stream too on social media, let other people know about the uh, the stream and uh, what we're doing here and of course everybody is welcome. And also don't forget that you can check out the all new Jenny Monday Club Wagon Commission, you can find that at the uh, Facebook group, uh, we did a big announcement on that earlier on today, it's selling really really well actually so so impressed um i got an email from um rails of sheffield who are handling all the order fulfillment big big thanks to them for that and they said that actually in the first hour 
um, we sold a substantial chunk of uh, the available stock when it comes through in uh, later on this year. So um, it's a case of if you want one of those amazing Acura scale uh, Jenny Monday Club Commission wagons, um, you need to get your order in sooner rather than later to avoid disappointment. Uh, Amtrak Junction says, I have Pepsi Max Cherry. Oh, good. <laughs> the trouble with Pepsi Max is it makes me go hyperactive. Um, so I have to be careful. It does mean that uh, it's a very cheap way of, um, of uh, 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 you know, going out clubbing or whatever. I used to used to drink a pint of Pepsi Max and I was good for the night. Um, I actually had a friend at university who was exactly the same. So we used to get a two litre bottle of Pepsi Max and share it between us if we went out to parties. It was, <laughs> it was just that there's a chemical in it that makes me go hyperactive. Mm, that's actually quite refreshing. I must admit, of late, during lockdown, I've kind of gone off a lot of alcohol. So um, I just don't don't feel in the mood for a lot of alcohol these days. Um, Nick Edwards says, Wally, November 21, that is not a good day if you want to run an event. Um, yeah, I think Wally will go ahead this year. I don't know. Has there been word officially from them? Um, and Julia Jones also asks, uh, anyone know if the train show at the NEC will happen? Not sure at the moment. Um, right. Um, Robert Becking says, I don't like the blister packing on the Backman Thomas range. No, I like a proper box, I have to say. Um, uh, Patrick Furlong says, uh, Game Hammer Classic Gaming, lay yourself down. Um, she'll be all right. She'll go and have a lie down. Um, so, uh, Matt of El says, take care, Zoe, Penna Lane TMD says, Zoe, take it easy, go and have a rest for a bit. Um, that's it. Iron Horse Heathen, Zoe, you feel better, chick, go lay down. Garthian says, get better soon, Zoe, gives everyone a break from TARDIS spotting. Oh, I never thought of it like that. Um, I don't even know where the TARDIS is. Um, it'll be, it'll be in a train somewhere, I guess. Um... Right, uh, Creeping Jane says, Ham Shackleton has not been well recently, COVID-19. It, it is, unfortunately, quite a few people have um, have been struggling with COVID. So, obviously, we wish everybody well, if either yourself or a friend or a relative that you know has um, has, has got COVID. Because it is it is pretty nasty at times, uh, and certainly for a lot of people, it seems to be... Um, the slow recovery back to full health afterwards seems to be the most difficult thing. Even if you don't necessarily have it very, very severely, um, I know a lot of people have suffered with that. But um, Jane94 says, so stay safe, Zoe, get well soon. Um, Aidens Railways as well says, so Zoe, do what's best for you, get better soon. Um, so thank you ever so much uh, for um, uh, uh, all your well wishes. Zach Farnworth says, my mum says, no problem. Well, thank you very much. And I did enjoy it. I had a couple of little triangles of Toblerone um, before um, before we came on air. And I really enjoyed it. So do say thank you. I've got, got your card, Zach, as well. I've got um, uh, my sister, your mother's card, too. Lovely bunch of flowers. So thank you ever so much. And it's been a weird day. Having a birthday in lockdown is a very peculiar experience, it has to be said. Because it doesn't feel like a birthday. And also, I've been hard at work all day. We've done the, the wagon launch, um, doing the Monday Club. I filmed a video with the, <clears throat> excuse me, the KR Models GT3. Now, um, what I will say about this, is we've got a full video coming soon. But it is an amazing model. I've been very thoroughly impressed with that. I believe they are still available through the KR Models website. Do check them out. Um, this one's got a full sound fitting. Uh, the Cupboard Monkey only brought up the first half of it. It's supposed to be downstairs for having photographs taken. Um, so I can't actually run it because it won't run without the tender. Um, even Terry says, here is a funny quote from my friend. Everything is suitable for human consumption. It might just kill you and make you sick. Well, yeah, does that really make it, it, it suitable? Um, uh, William Cuthbertson, hello to you. Zach Farnworth says, but hopefully I can get one of your models. It would be great to have one. Just got to wait until the dosh comes in from a job I'm doing for someone. Oh, well done. Um, I hope that goes incredibly well for you. Um... William Cuthbertson, I am doing pretty well, thank you. 
Uh, Ham Shackleton says, beep, 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 pizza is ready. Oh, I do approve of pizza. Uh, Clive Cobalt, Jenny, do you think Hornby would retool the Class 153 to make it an all-new Class 155? Never say never. I won't say retool it, but possibly do a tooling suite to allow it. I'm not sure. The 153 does look to be a really great model. I have seen them in the flesh. I don't actually own one. But I'm really actually interested in the Scott Rail ones, the livery application that they've got on that Scott Rail um, uh, one that they're doing later this year. I think it's coming out sometime sort of like July, August time, something like that. That does look to be an incredible livery, and I'm really looking forward to seeing those in the flesh. Gone Loco, hi to you. Um, Retro Mickey 82 as well says, feel bad as soon, Zoe. Um, and uh, let's have a look. Garthian says, I use Collett's models. The owner is a great guy, though I do use the two big retailers. I much prefer Collett's. Oh, brilliant. And um, that, yes, there are some really, really great uh, model shops out there. Penny Lane TMD says, Tiger Taz Models was a brilliant shop, sadly, and passed away last year. Oh, I'm very, very sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, I had heard of Tiger Taz Models. Uh, so sorry to hear. Uh, 57305 Northern Princess has finally arrived. I ordered the wagon as soon as it dropped. Boom! Thank you ever so much. And it is, of course, a great way to not only support the Monday Club channel, keep us going, but to have an amazing model. And if you've seen all of the Acura scale wagons as well, they are amazing models. So really looking forward to the MDO NDV releases. Other news coming through, we've also seen from Rails of Sheffield and Daypol that the D-Class is going through production really nicely. So we've, uh, I think Chinese New Year's come to an end, so production's picking up and they look amazing. The photos I've seen of the D-Class do look good. So it's not long to go now. If you haven't already ordered one, do get your orders in to avoid being disappointed. What I've heard from Rails of Sheffield is that the Southeastern and Chatham Railway liveries are proving incredibly popular. So we've got two different versions from Rails of Sheffield, plus one from the National Railway Museum, which covers basically three different locomotives. We've got um, the SECR Wartime Austerity Grey from Rails of Sheffield, and also the, um, the, the full ornate SECR livery as well. Uh, I think it's like a satin finish from rails of sheffield with a different that's a different running locomotive uh, number identity to the national railway museum who are doing the preserved example the price has come in we're looking at no more than 199 pounds they did say that we're going to try and keep them under the 200 pound mark they have just about done that well they're a penny underneath so um that is another piece of news that's come through really looking forward to those we've got so many lovely lovely locomotives coming through for the secr and it does make me wonder why hornby have not produced with their four and six wheelers um a set in the secr livery now i'm sure that they will be forthcoming i think it would be silly for them not to introduce those into the range but we've also got the hattons project genesis which are still due later this year and they will be coming out in the southeastern and chatham railway livery although the backman bird cages in secr wellington brown and the ornate um uh, chocolate lake liveries are all available i believe it's like you can have a rake of nine coaches all different in SECR livery from Backman if you bought every single one but they're not cheap they're about 75 pounds a coach just to warn you um what else now we've had had out the review of the Brighton H2 Atlantic in that really really nice burnt umber London Brighton and South Coast Railway livery we've got a video out on that it's been one of the most anticipated for me at least Backman models um, to be announced for this year. I had that ordered from the moment that it was uh, announced because I already got the H1 Atlantic, La France, uh, and I knew that I just needed that uh, locomotive to join with it. Um, the previous version of La France is still available from a number of shops. I did see it for sale at Rails of Sheffield along with the Monsal Green one, plus then the newest release, we've got the BR Lined Black, we've got the um, Malachite Green Southern, and of course the, um, the, an, 
the uh, burnt umber London Brighton and South Coast Railway livery versions. So there are f at least five different versions of the H1 and H2 Atlantics. They are subtly different between them, which brings us back to what I was saying about the tooling suites before with the Oxford Rail doing the J27, the J26, because they've made allowances in the tooling. And um, it, it's um, something that, that Backman have made allowances in the tooling to be able to do both the H1 and the H2. And I love it when manufacturers do that. I think it is such a great way of broadening the ready to run spectrum um, in the, the best possible way. Because you could imagine if they'd have done brought out the H2 and not tool to do the H1, the H1 would never really have appeared ready to run. So I think it is a great thing. Uh, Barry Turner, hi to you. Um, AD Pullen says, Jennifer, can you see Rapida doing a GWR14XX with the Lion? I think that that is a, a very strong possibility. Now, I know that DJ Models did for Hattons the 14XX042 auto tank. Now, a lot of people did complain a little bit about the performance of those being a bit lackluster. Going further back, um, uh, Hornby, still somewhere in the railroad tooling range by now, I expect, has the old X Airfix um, 042 auto tank. So I think that they might consider the uh, 14XX. I think it's certainly a locomotive that is definitely a lot of selling potential there. Um, the only risk for them is, is that the tooling for the DJM version must exist out there somewhere. And then being complete, it is possible that it could be brought to the market very, very quickly following an announcement to kind of head them off at the pass. Um, I don't know, unless, now this is another thing, could it be that that tooling in the DJM fire sale was bought by Rapido Trains and it may be that they are sorting out the flaws, so that could be where that tooling is. I don't know that for certain. We won't know for certain until the 1st of April, but certainly it's a very real possibility. Um, other things that were really interesting is the, um, I think it was a low Mac machine wagon um that the the little coach sat on now it would be very interesting to see if that appears in ready to run form um and um uh i would do wonder whether there will be some coaches coming out to accompany the lion as well so it'll be really interesting to see what this full range is there's a lot of speculation that there's some road vehicles as well including as an Aveling and Porter traction engine, uh, Bedford OB bus as well would be high on the cards. So there is a lot of stuff to tie in with the Titfield Thunderbolt that could be some very, very solid additions to the Rapido trains range. But like I said, we won't find out until midday on the 1st of April. So it's not that long to go, but we will look out for that. Tico 360, hi to you. Um, Peter Leyland says, has anyone found it difficult to purchase Humbrol Matte Black? I'm told it's as rare as hen's teeth. That's very strange. Um, I didn't know that. Um, I, I need to get some more, actually, because I, I think I've run out. I got Satin Black, which is number 85, but number 33, the Matte Black, is a great colour. Um, I don't know whether there is a, a production issue. I know some of the metallic paints, there have been issues where they've had to reformulate. I don't know whether that's affected the matte black. I hope not, because that was one of the best colours in the range in terms of usability, coverage. Um, if they have discontinued it, I would I would strongly suggest hoover up stocks whilst you can from model shops that still have some on the racks. Um, but no, I haven't heard anything. I can possibly drop an email to Hornby and see if there is an issue with that. Um, but um, I'm not aware of anything. Mark Holt says another Collets user here. Um, uh, Sean Len Cusina says shout out to sister. Uh, Jordy says those wagons on the right reminds me, reminds me of 41-45. Wagons on the right... Um, I mean, it might be an old car. I'm not quite sure um, which one you're referring to. Right, uh, Garthian says, I hope they do. This is the 14XX. The Hattons one is difficult to get now, and Rapido would do an even better one. Alan Bevan says, I'm assuming it is a diesel theme this evening. Um, actually, uh, it's King Cole won the toss, but it just happened to be 
that I had a lot of BR blue diesel going on and I bought a Hellion Class 25. I uh, still need to film a review on that. Um, I'm just going to scoot up to date because I see um, Graham Foster has very, very kindly donated $9.99 uh, and says for the pizza fun. Thank you ever so much. That is incredibly generous of you. Ron B says try Revel 8. It's the same as Humbrol Matte Black. That is actually a good, good tip there. Matthias Krigsman says Vallejo, 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 uh, Matte Black is really good too. Uh, ben Tullett says, I am back, just finished writing my little article for Car Social Media Drive Chive. Oh gosh, that's where the um, the Top Gear guys ended up. Gosh. Um, uh, Penna Lane TMD says, Boys at Newton Aycliffe has plenty of matte black 33 little tins in. Well, that's actually a good tip. There's some, some of the odd places that you can find Humbrol paint stocked. Try Hobbycraft as well. I know that they do stock. Humbrol paints worth going and checking out, but I do need to actually track down some matte black. Um, so I, I, will, I will get out there just in case it is getting difficult. Um, Peter Leyland says a friend of mine who works full time as a weathering profession found it impossible. He's now having to use an alternative that isn't as good as uh, is uh, on the matte black. Amtrak Junction says I find it hard to find a Tamiya paint chart, but only told to download the chart from Google. But I prefer the chart instead. I know what you mean. Sometimes it's nice to just have it there in your hand to refer to. And colours reproduced on a computer monitor aren't necessarily as helpful or even as accurate as an actual colour swatch chart. So I, I can very much see um, the the the, the uh, attraction to having a physical colour chart. Forever DC 302 says fly my chairman one. Thanks for your comment. Um, yeah, uh, Ham Shackleton says exactly the same. Downloading color charts is only as good as your monitor's coloring color renditioning. And it, it, it's true. I remember back in the days of CRT monitors, I had uh, had one, and I had a whole load of digital photographs that looked like silhouettes, and I thought they were marvelous until I got an LCD monitor. And then I could actually see the things that were in silhouette. And it just turned out that it was all down to the rendition of the colours on the monitor. And they actually took what looked like really amazing silhouette pictures and made them look a bit naff. Um, so it just goes to show. Matthias Krigsman asks, also is Pico still having production issues? All retailers are out of that N-Gage track. What I will say is do check out Arcadia Trains in Shore. Tim certainly did when I last spoke to him have um, good stocks of pretty much all of the Pico track, all the Flexi track, a lot of the points. I think there was, it was either left hand or right hand mainline express points uh, with the Electra Frog that they were struggling with, but everything else they did have in stock. Pico are still manufacturing. The production quantities are down because they have to do a lot of social distancing just to make sure that all the workforce is safe. Add to that that demand has gone through the roof and you've got the perfect storm for track getting to be difficult to get hold of. It's not impossible. And when I was speaking to Hattons, what they said is that even though it keeps showing as on order on their website, um, it's a little bit misleading because they said what is actually happening is people are placing orders when the stock comes in those orders are then being fulfilled and using up the stock that's coming in so it never appears as if it is in stock on the website but it is coming through and what they said is um certainly from them you probably find this with a lot of other shops uh, certainly the ones that online shops you have to put an order in and just wait it will come through you will get your track uh, but if you wait for it to appear in stock at some of the big box shifters like Rails of Sheffield and Hattons, Kono Model Centre, I guess, as well, that's what's actually happening. Demand is outstripping supplies. So you have effectively got to get yourself in the queue by placing an order. And that is the only way you can do it. Um, Simon Train's Model Railway Showcase. Um, uh, a big hello to you. Will Tucker says, today finally bought wood to start building phase one of new layout. 40 years after abandoning my last one. Arrives Saturday, so busy weekend ahead. I actually do love doing the woodwork. Um, it's one of the parts of model railway building that I really do enjoy. Um, I like doing DIY as well. So, you know, I like building shells. Building things is my thing. 
Um, so I quite enjoyed doing the baseboards up here. Once I had the room lined out, proper floor down, the electrics were in. I actually really enjoyed building the baseboards for Weir Yard because I love that kind of work. Um, so you're in for a treat. Uh, Gone Loco says, been fitting track the last three days, but stuck now. Is waiting for left-hand points. It's funny, actually. Yeah, I think Tim at Arcadia said it was a left-hand express electrofrog points. Um, I could be wrong there, but um, certainly it rings a bell. So um, do try some of the smaller, to do smaller shops. Like I said, Arcadia models at Shaw did have good stocks of Pico track. Give them a call tomorrow and um, uh, you know see what they've got if you're desperately looking for track. Um, also, a lot of the other shops, Durham Trains of Stanley, uh, 53A models might be worth trying. I know they don't have a particularly good website presence at 53A models, um, but if you look, you can find their phone number, give them a call, because that might be just the sort of place that does have stocks of track, because it's a little, you know, a little bit more involved to get hold of that stuff. Gronkston Model Railway says, if you really need Pico products, go direct to them instead of your local model shop. The downside is you will be paying the full RRP, but you're more likely to get them. And I wouldn't, and yes, I, you know, it's true that you will get them, and it's true that you will pay RRP. Um, but I think if you're placing orders with model shops, then um, I think you will get the track as well. Um, big hello to Ollie at Wardle Roads. Says hi guys. Been busy on the layouts and not not so busy at work. Finbard Mitchell says I got my Pico order a track recently from Sheffield. Yeah, and the track is still being made. It is out there. Don't despair. I know it can sometimes be infuriating where you're short of a certain type of track and you can't keep the build going, but it is out there. Um. Uh, Hyth Kent says, Jenny, you might have already answered, but I had to leave the room. But did you have to make any odd CV adjustments to your Backman H2 Atlantic in Umber? No, I didn't. Um, it ran absolutely perfectly, and we filmed the video. It should be going out soon. Um, it's still being done with the because the Trainomatic sponsorship still on at the moment. Um, that will change when I go to work in April for DCC Concepts because. They, they are in the same business and effectively competitors of each other. I can't continue um, being sponsored by one but working for another. And, I'm, you know, it's just one of those things. Um, but I fitted the Trainomatic 21-pin decoder, and I didn't have to change any of the CV settings. It's certainly something uh, that I found with the Trainomatic decoders, that they are just clunk-click every trip, fit and forget. You, um, out of the box, they just seem to work with all brands and makes of locomotives. Never had any problem with them. The same as well, I've had um, the, the DCC Concept Semblat, the Rails of Sheffield, um, Rails Connect decoders as well. Never needed to change any CVs with those. Uh, the only problems I've ever really had is if you put a Hornby decoder in a Backman model, they do seem to have some issues with the back EMF, and vice versa if you put a Backman decoder in another brand of locomotive, sometimes you do have to fiddle with the CV settings, but um, I didn't have any real problems with mine. Right. Um, what else? We Roof Railway says, Jenny, where are the videos? Unfortunately, the Cupboard Monkey handles all of that, and the Cupboard Monkey is not uh, well at the moment. She's got a lupus flare-up. So what we're going to do is we're going to carry the videos over to next week. I'm really, really sorry about this. I know a lot of you guys have been working really hard producing videos. We haven't forgotten about you. It's just simply the Cupboard Monkey um, has um, is really ill. She's soldiered on. She had to finish her own live stream earlier today, an hour and a quarter early. So it, it's unfortunately, um, I, I can't get the videos up and do the stream at the same time. Um, it is quite involved with the setup that we've got because I'd have to go hunting around, which means I can't talk to you guys. And um, uh, so I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to keep going with the stream. So really, really sorry about that. Hyth Kent says Jawtooth is very funny. Yeah, I do enjoy watching Jawtooth's channel. Uh, anybody's wanting other interesting things. You know, you had your regular complement of supermarket trolleys 
um, stolen cars from way, way back that had been dumped in there. But there was also a 16 ton mineral wagon. And this tallied with some folklore. Local folklore had it that a wagon had rolled away down the gradient, um, reached enough speed that it, it, it jumped the tracks and ended up in the marina, disappeared without sight, and people were like tight lipped. Oh, no, we don't know what you're talking about. Well, it turned up when they drained the marina. And of course, because it was a low oxygen environment in all the mud and pollution, the wagon was actually in remarkably good condition when they fished it out. I mean, it had had some knocks and bends from its um, its rather high speed journey, but ostensibly it was in reasonable condition. Um, you know, not really rotted because it had been in an oxygen free environment. And I believe that that wagon is now at the Astley Green Colliery Museum. But somewhere that wagon has been written off as lost without trace on British Railways accounts. Um, because they didn't officially know knew, know what happened to it. And I know that other wagons have turned up sort of at the end of sidings in bushes that have been lost in that way. And it's a fascinating area. Um, there's some of the, um, the Grampus wagons have been known to have been lost because they were derailed in ballast dumps. And rather than go to a lot of aggravation to re-rail them, um, it was not unheard of for the uh, digger operators to just dig a hole in the spent ballast and push the derailed wagon into it and bury it and pretend it was never there. And there was a ballast dump, I think, somewhere near Basingstoke that was, you know, obviously finished being a railway ballast dump, um, sold on for redevelopment many years later. And when they were putting in piling to build there, the pile went down and it kept bouncing on something. So they, they dug out, wonder what's going on here. And what they actually found was a British Rail Grampus wagon folded around the end of this pile because it had been dumped um, when it had derailed, buried. And then when they'd been piling, the pile had hit it, crushed it, and then just sort of kept bouncing on the metal. Um, right, so HLC789 Bob, big hello to you. Um, Richard Swiderski says, uh, yeah, no videos tonight. I'm really, really sorry about this. Unfortunately, Zoe is really, really ill, and it's Zoe that sorts out all of that. Wyvern Model Railway, big hello to you. Maddenstein Railway says, good night, Jen. Hope you're enjoying your birthday. God bless you. See you next week, and when you've had a little interview for me to watch later in the week. Um, no worries. Uh, well, look, you take care. I will check you. Um, I will um, uh, see you later. Uh, Cameron S says, how do Batman get the marker lights on the new Tool 21? I've heard this. I haven't seen them in the flesh, so I wouldn't like to comment too, um, um, too uh, much on this. But I know that I've heard from some of the magazines that there's been a bit of a boo-boo. Now, there have been other boo-boos. It's not unheard of for things to go slightly wrong with models and then sort of reach production with a bit of a, an own goal. Um, there's rumours of a wagon out there where the actual EP turned up and it was substantially either too long or too short, as in like you could measure it and it was like a real number of um, almost centimetres rather than millimetres. And of course, by the time you've got the EP, that means you've cut tooling, which means you are committed. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, Tony Wright says, I have been speed matching my two scale trains, Rivet Counter, EMD 45, so I can consist them. It took a while. Um, it can be tricky, actually, definitely. Larry Rogers, Jenny has the lower sto level storage traps on Weir Yard worked out as well as you would hope. Now, one thing I will say to you guys is, if you're building underboard storage yards, give yourself a little bit more headroom. I didn't. Um, basically, from the board... To the underside of the board above is about that far. Um, it's probably about twice the height of a coach. What do you think? It's, it's like that's plenty of headroom. No, it's not when you have to go in there and retrieve things or see what's down there. So do give yourself plenty of, of vertical height if you can. Um, but they have worked out. I've got about 300 coaches down there. It is an incredible storage space. Um, and you know, I'd be lost without it. And it does mean that I can pull out an entire train of coaching stock. And it's like one of the sidings holds a full 15 coach BR Blue Grey set. And it just makes it so easy to switch over some of these rakes of coaches. 
When it comes to wagons, not so. They have a habit, if you propel a very long wagon train in, something will decide to jump the tracks. Um, and I don't want it. So I don't tend to store wagons down there. But for coaching stock, and my coaching stock more than fills the fiddle yard. I've got so many of them. It has been an absolute boon. Belmont Junction says, keep on modelling and spend you, spend your money supporting our local model shops. The makers make enough money as they do. Yeah, and um, support your local model shop because when they're gone, they really will be gone. And uh, it's very, very difficult to get some of these smaller bits and certainly the products from smaller companies become very difficult to get hold of otherwise. It's my model railway says I've had some Pico SLE 189 fine scale left hand large point with electrofog on order since November. Again, what I will say is check out some of the small shops. Like I said, uh, my top tip is um, call up tomorrow Tim at Arcadia Models in Shaw and see what track he's got in stock. I know last time I spoke to him, he said he still has some pretty good stocks of most of the Pico track. 53A models in Hull. You'll find their phone number on their website. You cannot order anything through their website. It's not a very good website. But that is exactly the sort of shop that you may find stocks of the track. So give them a call tomorrow as well. And as always, do tell them that you heard about them on the Monday Club. I don't make anything at all out of that. It just simply is, uh, it makes it easier when. When I um, need to um, uh, borrow photos from websites, they go, oh, yeah, you're Jenny, aren't you? Yeah, go on then. Right. Um, right. Um, Mike Ramsey's other channel. I don't know if this is the case in the UK, but in the US, Batman Locos have capacitors in parallel with the motor that can interfere with back EMF. I didn't know about that, but um, that... That might make sense, actually. Um, I'll have to investigate. I'm not sure whether they do, but um, I, I'm, I think I might look into. Matthias Krigsman says, Also, you can never really be sure on who is the manufacturer of your Backman decoders since they seem to be changing their suppliers every so often. Yeah, I heard that as well. Um, um, somebody did tell me, uh, there's a way of looking it up. There's uh, one of the CVs you can interrogate and read. And then you can work out from the code it gives you who actually made that decoder. Uh, David Watt says, Bladoop is probably the noise of the trains running in the background. Yeah, um, they, um, uh, they, they do make quite, actually I find it quite a soothing noise, it must be said. Uh, Southern Train Girl says, Buffering. Ham Shackleton says, Sight crashed. Oh, my word. Um... Uh, Gronkston Model Railway says nothing happened much on Almsmead this month, just building the scenic break. J. Pearl Anderson says buffering. Richard Swiderski, Circle of Doom. Are we back? Sue at Pudham Junction says Circle of Doom. A.D. Pollen says buffering. Um, are we online? It's my Model Railway says Jenny's frozen. Oh no, 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 no. Are we back? Are we back? Um,. Are we back? Yeah, apparently we're back. Hello, everyone. It's going wrong with the buffering. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to send the cupboard monkey uh, to put a pound. Uh, oh, my word. Connected. Stream's going on and off for me. Uh, we're having a few troubles now, Richard. We're back. We're back. We're back. Um, oh, my word. Um, oh, my word. Fly my chime once has just bought a number 33 Humbrol map black on eBay. Not cheap at nine ninety nine. Oh my word, that is gouge tastic. Um, don't encourage the eBay gouges, but that is a lot. So, uh, but free post, yeah, at uh, nine ninety nine. Well, should have free postage, huh? Right. Um, Simon Train's Mother Railway Showcase. Yeah, I didn't realise that there was a problem. Um, right. Uh. Ron B got kicked off the internet. You fell off. <laughs> yeah, Cameron Essis can tell Jenny is missing the cupboard monkey. I am. I miss her greatly. But my aim is getting better. <laughs> uh, John Nutman says she needs to look at her phone. Yeah, I was waxing lyrical, probably about something like those those missing wagons. Um, Penna Lane TMD says, Jenny, you, you've been talking to yourself and many of us missed everything you said there. Aww. Um... Yeah, um, Jay Paul Anderson says, Jay, look at your blooming phone. 
Grongston Mother Railway, a panzer tank, was found under a peat bog. It was dug out and looked almost new. After it was cleared out and had a long service, they tried to fire the turret, and it did. Yeah, uh, actually, it's not uncommon to find uh, tanks that were dumped in peat bogs, usually by um, retreating sides um, when they ran out of fuel or if they broke down as a way of stopping them falling into enemy hands. Um, I've seen all sorts, there's loads of videos actually on YouTube of them being salvaged. And like, like you say, they can be in amazing condition. Um, now, um, I remember reading somewhere there was a steam locomotive that, that uh, jumped the tracks in the UK and ended up in a peat bog. Um, I believe that a proportion of it was scrapped on site, but not all of it was able to be removed. And I do wonder how much is left in the peat bog. Um, I would guess probably the frames, the cylinders, the wheels, maybe. I don't know. Um, but certainly um, some interesting stories out there. And that 16-ton mineral wagon that was in the marina, that survived very, very well because it was in an oxygen-starved um, environment. Uh, Simon Train's Model Railway Showcase says, Cannot wait to see Jenny's reaction when she finds out it was buffering. <laughs> I should go in then, didn't I? Um, Sue so at Putham Junction says, It's okay, Jen, we'll catch up with us all in 15 minutes. Oh my word, yeah, I, John Nutman, I did find out. Um, I'm at 2041, but I know that that clock over there is showing the wrong time at the moment. Don't forget to tickle that like button, share the stream as well, and also do consider subscribing if you've not already done so. And check us out at the Facebook group, the Jenny Monday Club Facebook group as well. The best way of keeping up to date with all things Jenny Monday Club too. And also don't forget as well, we've got that all new wagon commission that we announced earlier on today. Order fulfillment is being carried out by Rails of Sheffield, so you can order with confidence. Um, and um, like I said, that once they sell out, that's it. The, there's only a finite number of these. And Rails of Sheffield told me that uh, they've been selling quite quickly at the moment. Uh, <laughs> Tim's model railway in different videos, and someone should super chat and tell her. No, you don't need to do that. Um, Clint Brownfield says Amazon has Humbrol number thirty-three at five ninety-nine, but only ten left. That's a, they, they shouldn't be that expensive. Again, ring up Tim at Arcadia. Ring up 53A models. Uh, Durham Trains of Stanley. Um, Lord and Butler in Cardiff. Hereford Model Centre. Cheltenham Model Centre. Uh, all of these places. Go to them first. Don't, don't, don't feed the pockets of the eBay gougers before you've checked all the other usual outlets. Um because um, I will check with Hornby actually. If a lot of people are saying that Hornby, uh, that Humbrol rather, number 33 is proving impossible to find, I will check with Hornby after the stream. I'm going to fire off an email to uh, Montana Hearn at uh, Hornby and just find out whether there's been an issue with that. George Botterini says, Love listening to her, she's great. Oh, you're really kind. Oh, Ron B says, Yep, yeah, definitely, that is expensive. Um, Flymo Chairman 1 says, I'll put the address and requirements for sending videos in, Jenny, even if you're not running any this week. Yes, definitely. Please do that. And like I said, we're going to have a bumper session next week. And what we might do is we might run a little bit long just to make sure that we get all the videos out, depending on how the cupboard monkey is feeling. I'm, just, I'm really, really sorry uh, about uh, not being able to show videos. It's just simply that I can't speak to the camera and operate the computing system at the same time, because it's basically one or the other. Um, yeah, I'm just going through all the chat. Uh, AD Pullen says, Tar for the live stream night. All uh, Matterville says, Jenny did address the stream going down when it happened, but some people may have missed it. She kept going as she's a professional. Ooh, <laughs> thank you. Cool. Um, uh, David Watts suggests again if you want black, matte black, water based acrylic paint by Vale. Va Is it Vallejo or Vallejo? I don't know. Um, Cameron Patterson says, No model shops in Glasgow. But there is Harbin Hobbies in Edinburgh. Um, right, yeah. Uh, Chris Cox says, it's not the track work, it's the metal joiners, as apparently the machine is broken. I didn't know that. Uh, but again, 
Uh, see, with rail track joiners, what, they're not that expensive to post. So if you ring around, you can probably get a lot of model shops to post them fairly inexpensively to you. And you can, somebody's now going around buying up all of the rail joiners they can get their hands on. Um, but um, there's stuff definitely out there, some of the shops that are um, maybe not as well known. Right, uh, Ruben Ashwell says, that was a brilliant freeze. Uh, <laughs> Simon Chain's Model Railway Showcase says, the fake buffering was funny, being honest. Uh, Stevie Film says, there are whole diesel locos in a landfill in Scotland, asbestos ridden class 26, I believe. Uh, yes, one, just one. And um, essentially when the class 26s were stripped, I think it was Motherwell, uh, they put all the asbestos in one of the body shells um, and then that body shell ended up going to um, uh, Patterson's tip, which I think is visible from the M74 on the new extension as you keep going into um, Glasgow on the M74. Um, and I don't imagine it's a full working locomotive. The engine alternator... Um, a lot of stuff will have been stripped out of it. It will it will definitely not have an engine block in it. It will not have any of the other internal gubbins. It will not have bogies. It will not have fuel tanks. It is literally the body, as you saw on the pyramid at uh, somewhere like Vic Berry Scrapyard. They filled it with all the asbestos that they stripped out of the other members of the class. They wrapped it in industrial strength polythene and it went into the tip. So it'll be crushed flat under the weight, I guess. Um, not in great condition. Certainly not in any fit state to be um, uh, salvaged at any point. Um, Jay asks, will they come with their own certificate of authenticate of what you just said? Um, authentication. Um, no. They don't come with a certificate, but they are limited edition. They are limited um, to actually quite a small number, a surprisingly small number. I'm not sure whether I should tell you the actual number. Uh, 250, but don't tell anybody. So there's only 250 of them. Bear in mind that I'll be keeping a couple. So um, uh, just bear in mind that they are limited edition. They will not be repeated. The running number is unique. The livery is prototypically accurate. So if you're buying some of the other uh, Acura scale MDV wagons, it is a great opportunity to increase your rake by one without needing to renumber it. And I believe the livery that's on it is, is quite different to, um, in terms of the other markings on it. It, it, it's uniquely different to the main range ones. Uh, right, Naive Gage, big hello to you. Uh, James Furman says, love this. When I was a kid, we had a 4 before 4 meter layout. We had working cable cars, trams, and a live street. We donated it to the local scout group when we moved house. Um, uh, let's have a look. Uh, Johan Swanapool says, hope you gulls all well. Yeah, we're doing really well, actually, apart from the cupboard monkey's a little bit ill at the moment, but she will get better. Uh, Robert Riella says, uh, try blackboard paint. Now, that's actually probably quite a good idea. Um, you probably get it from, certainly in the UK, there's um, like places like B&Q, The Range might sell it. That's actually a really, really good um, good idea. David Watts says, it's Vallejo. So it's J as in Y, same as Hellion. Yeah, we only learned that the other uh, few months ago when I interviewed uh, Ben Jones from Hellion uh, for the first time. Belmont Junction says, have a glass of wine, Jenny, while cupboard, cupboard Monkey is in bed. I might do, actually. I've been bought some really nice wine by my sister. Trevor Dickinson says, Humbrol 33 is out of stock on the Airfix website. I will find out if there's a production issue with that. I know some of the metallic paints have had to be reformulated and you just can't get good metallic paints anymore. So I don't know whether that's fallen into the same thing. James Furman says, that goods train is huge. Yeah, the 16-ton mineral wagons. I think we counted last week. There's about 54 wagons on that. Um, Fly my chairman once says, I saw the fuss around that loco in Uddingston. It held up the finishing of the M74 ring road, apparently. Oh, right. Um, is that the one in Patterson's tip? 
Um, John N from NC. Uh, the cupboard monkey has uh, a migraine coming on. Doesn't feel very well. She's also had a lupus flare up. She does suffer from lupus. So she's been ill all day. Has uh, soldiered on. Um, so um, she, she'll be all right. Crossways Point Junction says, I only need two subscribers. Um, so if anybody's interested in Crossways Points Junction, two more subscribers. Uh, I'm sure that um, uh, there'll be somebody who's interested. Um, Chris Cox says, Rails Lady told me last weekend as part of an, now the only item outstanding on my order, so free PMP. Excellent. Garthian says, glad I've ordered two wagons at that limited run. Well worth the money for them too. Excellent. On message. Thank you very much. Wicked Insanity, big hello to you. Um, Matthias Krugsman says, should have had numbered certificate for that resale value 10 years down the line. Um, <laughs> if I if I produced a fill in your own uh, certificate, everybody would have number one. <laughs> or 007. I, uh, the, the problem with having a certificate is they have to be manually added. Um, and that does add considerably to the cost. And I suppose what you've got to say to yourself is, um, they are an expensive, you know, let's not beat about and around the bush. It's a quality wagon, but you pay for quality. Do you really want it to be significantly more expensive? Um, but um, we, what we might do, maybe we'll print your own certificate. Um, uh, Mad About Trains 222, big hello to you. Craig Douglas says, Wonderf Wonderland, Edinburgh. I have the Humbrol 33 black listed in stock, both tin sizes, the 14 mil and the big 50 mil. Excellent. So that's um, at Wonderland in Edinburgh. Thank you very much, Craig Thomas. Doug uh, sorry, Craig Douglas for that. Yeah, as I said, it is out there. Give um, the smaller model shops a call. And um, it's not just sold in model shops. I know that um, Hobbycraft um, do carry ranges. Some of the department stores that have toy concessions that stock Airfix kits, they might not stock the model railway stuff, so they might be off a lot of people's radar, but they'll still have those Humbrol paints. Right, Graham MCK says, is Uddingston Model Centre closing? Um, I'm not aware. Um, Gronkston Model Railway says the problem with Humbrol paints is they keep moving production to keep the cost down. And with that, the quality changes. Back about nine years ago, they moved from China to India. Paint was bad. Yeah, I've had a few of the tins from that period. You either get them and it's like, um, it's like a paste because there's not enough solvent in. Or they're like water because it's all solvent and basically not mixed the batch props properly. Skipsy Trains, hello to you. Crossways Point Junction says, I've got so much more done. We'll do a special video in the next couple of days for you, Flymo. I will mention you because you're such a good, a good guy. Oh, that's very kind. Phil Metcalf said, Vallejo do some nice acrylic metallics. They work best over a matte black primer, though. Right. Um, but yes, ham shuttle and Hobbycraft is very expensive, but I wouldn't say that they're the £9.99 for a single tin. Of Humbrol 33 expensive that eBay has apparently turned up. Dragon Junction Mark II, big hello to you. Um, uh, um, so David Watson's boys sell for layout along with a good tabletop gaming stores. Oh yes. Samuel Live says bye Jenny, thank you. Thank you ever so much for joining us. It's been great having your company. Um, I'm just looking at the, I'm not sure what time we're on. So we're at, gosh, we're at nine o'clock. I hadn't realised that the time had come round. So um, basically, roundup of the news. It's been great having your company, like I said before. Don't forget to tickle the like button, share the stream as well. And uh, if there's any parts that you've missed, you can catch up with them on catch up. Afterwards, it becomes a normal uh, video. A big, big thank you to everybody who's donated, not just on the super chat, but also the paypal.me. It is amazingly generous of you guys. Without you, it would not be possible to keep this channel running. Um, so thank you ever so much. We'll be putting that towards uh, the next model to run on the layout. So um, certainly in the comments on the video, not in the chat because um, I won't necessarily see that, but if you put in the comments on the video itself, any suggestions on what the next locomotive that we're young really, really needs, then do do that. I do look at all the suggestions. It'd be really nice to get some inspiration for what I need to get next, which will go through the review. We do have a Helium Class 16 review that has been filmed. Also, um, as I showed before, the uh, American Limited 
uh, tank cars. They have been in for review, so a big, big thank you to those. And uh, also, I've uh, just seen there. Oh my word! Matt Ovell says has very. Oh my word! Forty-two pounds. Says you're not going to like it. Happy birthday and fee. Better situation. That is so, so generous of you. Thank you so, so much. Oh, my word. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm very nearly speechless there. Thank you so, so much. Um, and that is amazing. And like I said, if people want to put a suggestion in the actual comments to the video, not the, the chat, but the comments to the video, I will take a look at them all, have a think about something that you think that Weir Yard is missing, and I will be putting money towards uh, the, the money that's been donated towards that. Um, like I said before as well, a uh, big, big thank you to Scale Model Scenery, your one-stop shop with the link in the description down below for all the amazing products for really bringing your model railway to life. We highlighted earlier on in the stream today the pre-coloured slate roofing kits. These look amazing. I've seen photos of the actual product. They look great. Now, if you're wanting to add an extra special something to even to something like a super quick or a Metcalf building, these give you that texture, the all important texture. And I always say this whenever you see me doing ground cover, texture is almost as important as color. So it's a great product for scale model scenery. Do check it out. And uh, uh, if you follow the link in the description box down below, that will take you straight to their website. And also the platform access stairs look absolutely amazing. It's an etched kit, uh, a laser cut etch kit, um, which means that all the detail is there and they are an absolute joy to build. Um, as I said before as well, sorry about no videos. Uh, other big news, we've got the Jenny Monday Club wagon that has been launched. Do check it out, being sold and fulfilled through Rails of Sheffield. Delivery is in Q3 along with all of the other main range Acura scale wagons uh, from the MDO, MDV range. It's strictly limited. There are only 250 of them. So um, get your order in to avoid being disappointed. And the other big news is that from the beginning of April, my day job, not the Monday Club, not the uh, the YouTube channel, but my day job. I will be working for DCC Concepts, bringing to them hopefully the, the same video, the great video content that I've been doing for my YouTube channel. We'll be focusing on how-to guides for the full DCC Concepts range of models and also looking to do some DCC fitting guides and maybe even some interviews. So really, really looking forward to that. Thank you guys for your amazing support. And uh, as I said before as well, I'd just like to say a big, big thank you to Train Ovmatic, who have been an amazing sponsor of the channel over about 18 months. And I am I am so grateful for their uh, support through all this. And as I said before, they are great products. They are still great products, even though as I'm now going to work for a competitor, I, I'm it, it's it's not possible to have them as a sponsor. They are still great products, it's still out there. Do check them out. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying take great care of yourself. Bye for now.
course I know how to end the stream. I just thought you might like to see the trains running. Jenny is still reading your comments. <laughs> Don't worry, Southern Train Girl. Oops. <laughs> Don't worry, pretend I'm not here.
I'm going to have to go now, but look, it's been great having you company. I hope you've enjoyed this special extra 20 minutes on the end of just scenes of Weir Yard. So until next week, you guys take great care of yourself again. Thanks for all the support through the, uh, the stream. So happy modelling, guys. I'll catch you next time. Bye for now. I have to go over there for the computer. <laughs> <laughs>